to go through 30 questions here. I'm going to get 100%. My hands are up. I got no calculator on my table. This is just going to be using my brain. You can even watch my eyes. They will not leave the screen. And so here we go. I'm going to click on course challenge. This screen here pops up. Oh, maybe because I did a question already. Maybe that's why. I am curious why it's saying I already got one wrong. Um, that's discouraging. Okay, so let's let's zoom in here. Okay, and we're going to take a look at this. Lewis tried to evaluate four times three thousand four eighty two step by step, but Lewis made a mistake. So what we're looking at here is breaking down three thousand four hundred and eighty two into the sum of each place value or each place um, each digit. Uh, with its place value. So 3,482 is 3,000 plus 400 plus 80 plus 2. If we are going to multiply this, we can use our distributive property. And if I take a second here, this is one of the reasons why I actually enjoy teaching some of these common core standards in the Ontario system because I don't have a lot of experience teaching math at the elementary level being a secondary teacher, but I do know for secondary students, this is a great way to jump into our one of the toughest topics in grade nine algebra, and that's distributive property, because we're not using variables, we're just using numbers. And to use distributive property here, we take a number that is outside the brackets, that is multiplying a sum inside the brackets, what I like to call a product of a sum, and we need to break it up into a sum of products. But if we look at step two here, this four is supposed to multiply each of these digits. This four is adding, that's not right. And so in this particular question, we're supposed to go step by step and figure out the mistake. We're not supposed to be adding. We're supposed to be multiplying four with three with 3,480 and then two. And if we check, we get it right. Okay, seven divided by 20. So this one I can do quick. Seven divided by two is 3.5. Because we're dividing by 20, we have to divide by an additional 10. And there's our answer. 247 is 200s, 4, 10, 7, ones. Good. Um, if it was 7 ones and 0 hundreds, we would have our 4 tens plus an additional 20 because 100 is 10 tens. And so 200 would be 20 tens. Adding that with the 4 tens from previously or from above. That gives 24. Now, if we wanted to treat 247 as in the ones column, that would be 247 ones because hypothetically here, or I gotta stop using big words. Let's just keep it simple here. Uh, 247, if we have 24 tens, 110 is 10 ones. So that's 240 ones plus the seven from before. That gives 247. Sarah decides one third of her milk. She pours the milk evenly among five bottles. What fraction of her milk will she put in each bottle? So we are dividing a third of a glass or a carton of milk by five. When we divide a fraction, we have to do our keep switch flip and turn division into multiplication. Dividing by five is the same as multiplying by one over five. And that's because five is a fraction or as a fraction would be five over one. And one over three times one over five is one over 15. Later, when we go through what I'll call some more described as more challenging Khan Academy questions, the ones that are a little bit harder to do in using mental math, I will be writing out my work on, on screen. So don't, don't stress about that. Okay. So which of the following expressions are equivalent to negative 11 over four? So when we look at our integer math, we know that two negatives make a positive. So pretending that the negative 11 here was with, or the negative sign here was with the 11 and the negative four uh, was down in the denominator. Fractions are just another way of showing division. So that means, that means that negative 11 over negative four, the two negatives would have to make a positive. And over here, 
the two negatives with the 11 and 4 are actually going to cancel to make a positive, but this negative out front makes our final answer negative. Okay, so this one, let's do, so we're going to do 64 over 100. Okay, so I'm going to do this in my head here. So let's, let's go one piece at a time. So if I do, let's do uh, 0 0.64 times 5. So 5 is the same as dividing by 2 and multiplying by 10. Why? Because 10 divided by 2 is 5. If I do that, I get 3.2. And that's going to add with whatever 0.3 of 0 0.64 is. And if I take 3 times 64, that's going to be 192 or 1.92. We have to divide that answer by 10 because we didn't multiply 64 or 0.64 by 3. We multiplied it by 0.3 or 3 tenths. And so if we put those two together, we're going to get 3.392. And I'll check my, my math here. One way I can check that is I could do um, 6 with 5.3. And 5 is 30, 31.8, so 3.18. And then 4, that would be 20, that would be 21.2. Yeah, so that would give us the right answer, I believe. Let's check. Okay. Got to be a little bit more confident here. <laughs> All right. Negative 2 divided by 2, negative 1, 3 times 6. 18. You can just sort of click through here. Subtracting these two, we're going to have 72. If we subtract the ones column, we are going to have 43 minus uh, 0.43 minus 0.30. So that's going to be 1, 3. Fill in the blanks. 14 divided by 2 is 7 because 7 times 2 is 14. This one here, let's treat our mixed number, our mixed fraction as improper. 4 and 1 are 4, plus 3 is 7. So we have 7 over 4 times 5. As a fraction, that would make 35 over 4. If we multiply the numerators, 5 and 7, with our denominators 1 and 4. And if I'm appearing to be really going through this really fast, and in some ways, some of you are having trouble following along, what I will say is there's no reason, no reason that without, you know, just a little bit of practice, you can't be doing the same thing I'm doing. I'm not that smart. I may look smart. I may, you know, have a shaved head because my brain is so big or whatever people say. I'm not that smart. I just practiced a lot and got good at it. Simple as that. Okay. So... 0.4 divided by 5, that is 4 um, tenths or 40 hundredths. 40 divided by 5 we know is 8. So if we have 40 hundredths, and the reason I have hundredths is because 4 tenths is going to be a tenth is 10 times a hundredth. If we think about our place value, 40 hundredths divided by 5 is going to make 8 hundredths, 0 0.08. Okay, you can do this using fractions. 4 tenths is 4 out of 10, or 2 out of 5. Okay, 2 out of 5 divided by 5 is the same as 2 out of 5 times 1 out of 5. That's um, 2 out of 0. Point, uh, 2 out of 25. That fraction is 0 0.08. Okay, 2 out of 3 divided by 8. Um, that's the same as 2 over 3 times 1 over 8. We can write that as 2 over 24, multiplying numerator and denominator. But 2 over 24, both numbers are even. That reduces to 1 over 12. 2 can divide by 2 to make 1. 24 can divide by 2 to make 12. Okay. Use partial products to multiply 35 and 70. Okay. So if we do the tens column, 3 and 7 are 2100. Because 7 and 3 are 21. We have the two zeros from the tens. 
350, so 70 times five, that's correct, right? 70 times five ones will be 350. Seven times three tens, so seven times three tens, that would be 210. And then if we do uh, the last one here, which one did we not do? We didn't do the ones column. So that would be 35 because that's five ones with seven ones. And adding all of that up, because that's the final step when we do our partial products for multiplication, the zeros here with the five are gonna make five in the ones column, three, one is four, five is nine in the tens column, one, three, and two is six in the hundreds column, and then we just have a lone two in the thousand. Okay. Always good to double check your answers. I think I'm right. Take a look here. Okay, so let's go column by column because this is a big one. Four and three in the ones is seven. Eight and two is going to make a zero for ten. Um, that's ten tens. So when we add that with the zero and nine in the hundreds column, that's going to give us actually ten again in the hundreds column. We have to carry that one. And three and four in the thousands column are seven. So that's going to make eight with the additional one we had from the 10 in the hundreds. If I do two and five, that is seven. If I do five with nothing in the hundred thousand column, we get this. And I think I'm right because 550, if I round this down, and 20 is going to make 57, three and four, but we're carrying all that stuff from before. That should be right. Okay. Good. Okay, so first thing for this one, we're dividing 80 into 5,680. There's a zero here and a zero here. Why is that special? Well, there's an extra factor of 10 that we can cancel out. And now we're just trying to figure out how many times eight, right, goes into 500. 68. And if we look at the hundreds and the tens columns, that's 56. I know that eight goes into 56. Well, let's do the math here. Eight. I'll do my fingers here. So eight times one, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. That's 48 plus eight, 56. That's seven times. And if you do your long division, you'll remember, or if you remember long division, 56 minus 56 is zero. We have to bring down this eight. And how many times would eight go into eight? It would be one time. And so our answer is 71 with remainder zero. Okay. If you're wondering why I was able to ignore those zeros. Again, it's because they are an extra factor of 10. You could divide this number by 10 and this number by 10, and those two factors would cancel. 400 plus 388, that's 788. Multiply 0 0.12 times 5. 0 0.12 times 5 is going to make 0 0.6. Okay, and that's because 12 over 100 times 5, 12 times 5 is 60, 60 over 100, that'd be 0 0.6. Which of the following is a correct interpretation of the expression 6 minus 13? We are going to start at 6, and we're going to move right, or excuse me, left, 13 spots because of the minus sign. If we look, the only option there that has that is C. So we're somewhere over here at 6, and we're going to go left 13. We're going to end up at minus 7. Okay, so 5.3 and 8.2. So let's do... How is best to do this one? I might have to do this using partial products because this is a hard one. Five and eight are going to make 40. Uh, point three and eight are going to make 24 or 2.4. Um, 
five and point two are going to make one. And then point two and point three, that's going to make six over a hundred. I think my math is good there. Okay, because three tenths and two tenths is going to make six hundredths. Let's read those as fractions. So altogether, that's 43.4. Clear that, clear that, and then awesome. Three cubed is 27 minus 10 is 17 plus seven is 24. A lot of these tricks that, I, that, I, that are making it look like I can do this math so hard. Like this is like, this is the connection to chess here between math. Um, I don't want to dis discount any of the efforts, the great chess grandmasters out there have, have demonstrated to become grandmasters in chess. But you'd be surprised. It's not so much about thinking as it is memorizing. And knowing that three cubed is 27 that quickly is not because I'm smart and I can do three times three times three in my head that fast because I've memorized the powers of three. I've memorized the powers of two. Memory is useful. I don't know why people have forgotten that for some reason. I guess because we don't need to remember anything because it's all on our phones, but I, I disagree. I disagree with that statement. If you couldn't tell already, I'm a little opinionated, especially about the phones. Now, what does the eight represent in five eighths? That's the number of pieces we've cut up our, our pizza into, our cake into, our pie into. So it is the parts we have, the number of equal parts we have in one hole. Okay, Because we can only deal with one hole at a time when we have a fraction. The numerator is the number of pieces that we're counting. Use the tape, di tape diagram to uh, visualize 1 over 3 divided by 5. We know that's 1 over 15 from the previous question we did. Um, yeah, if we have a third, and we're dividing that third into pieces of 5, that ends up making 1 out of 15 pieces. Um, because if you divide the third into 5, the remaining 2 thirds have to be divided into 5. That makes 15 pieces total. So 1 out of 15. Right. This is another example of where we can split up a, a difficult product or a difficult quotient using this idea of the distributive property. If we're dividing 2,439 by 4, technically it's the same as dividing 2,400, okay? which is what you would get if you took away 39 from this value. And that 39, we know, is 36. It's part 36 and another part 3, because 3 and 36 make 39. And if we divide those parts that we know, call one of them A, call the other B, their total is actually going to give us our quotient. And because we can't divide 4 into 3, 3 is going to be our remainder. And so if we look here, how many times does 4 go into 2,400. Well, if we take away the two zeros for a second, four goes into 24 six times, add the two zeros back, that's 600. 609, or 609, there's our quotient. And here's our remainder. Oh, three. Oh, three. Wouldn't make sense to have a remainder of four because that's what we're dividing. That's our divisor. Good. Fill in the table to make uh, 2.15 in two different ways. So two ones, one tenth, five hundredths. If we keep the five hundredths and take away one of the ones, a one is worth 10 tenths. So we took away one of the ones, that's 10 tenths with the previous tenths. That would make 11, right? So one tenth plus 10 tenths from the missing one is 11. 809,000 and 45 hundredths would be 8 times 100,000. Okay, that's all of those. 9 times the 1,000 
Yep, so that's those. And 45 hundredths. 45 hundredths is four tenths and five hundredths. Because remember, one tenth is worth ten hundredths. So you can say 45 hundredths as long as you remember in this column, that place value, or the place value, that digit, uh, that would be four tenths. So I believe it's this one. Right. Yeah. Okay, 114 divided by 19. So for this one here, we just might have to, this one we just have to do our counting, right? Because 19 won't go into 11. We can't really break this up into anything that would work for us, right? Um, 19 and 5 is going to be 95. 95, and I just did that trick where I divided 19 by 2. That would be 9.5 multiplied by 10, 95. And I will be showing these on paper as I kind of explain these, these different tricks uh, throughout the course or throughout these this stream. Um, if we look, 114 divided by 19, so I said 5. 6 times 19 is going to be 120 because 20 times 6 is 120. Less 1 times 6, that's... 114. So 19 actually, 19 goes into 114, it actually goes in six times with remainder zero. Three and an eighth, two and three fifth times as much. So that means we have to multiply three and one eighth is 24 plus one, 25 over eight. This is going to be 13 over five. So we have, let's do this again. 8 times 3, 24, plus 1, 25 over 8. That's our improper fraction. We're multiplying that by 13 over 5. The 25 and the 5 can actually divide out by a factor of 5, leaving this denominator as 1. So we have 13 over 1, which is 5 over 8. 5 and 13 are going to make 65 and 1 times 8 is going to make 8 which is 65 over 8 and to check my math here one other way to do this um, so we said what that this was this was 13 over 5 right if I do 13 over 5 times 3 that's well, let's keep it with the same denominator so we, our denominator ended up being 8, so let's try it this way. So let's do 3 and 1 8 times 2, that part. 2 and 3 over 8, so 2 and 25 over 8 is 50 over 8. Okay. And then we're adding to that whatever 3 fifths of 25 over 8 would be. And that would give us... Again, that would that would the trick there is that the five would cancel, right? With the twenty-five, so we would have five over eight times three over one. That would make fifteen over eight. Add those together, you get sixty-five. So that's right. and that's it. Now, I guess it was uh, poetic that I was talking about progress and all that sort of stuff because. Notice I got one question wrong. I got 2,525 energy points. These are slightly different than mastery points, which we can explain later. But the idea is I saw 63 skills and only one question I got wrong. I was actually, even in doing 30 questions, right? Because 30 questions would hypothetically, you would think be 30 skills, but because some skills overlap. You need to know how to multiply in order to multiply fractions. I was actually able to level up 62 skills. Now, if you do the math here, 1 and 3, or 1 and 62 or 63, 63 and 137, that would make 220 skills. Right? Math good there? So there's 220 skills that are covered in this course. I've only done a small fraction. I've done actually less than half. 
right? 63, I only saw 63 out of 220. So I only saw approximately a third. Now, will my progress level up 30% or 33% or of the, the points because I got all these right? Not necessarily. I've only done this assessment. I've only done this course challenge one time. And you can see, look at all the skills I didn't get, but you'll notice the ones that I did, I've only gotten, if I zoom in here on one of these castles, I've only actually gotten part of the way to a full, what is called full mastery of the skill. That means I know how to divide by six, I've demonstrated that, but have I demonstrated it enough to say that I'm perfect? And I know that perfection is something that is, for a lot of students that that creates a lot of anxiety because it's like how can anyone be perfect in anything and that's why i don't really like using the word perfect to describe the skill or mastery of a skill one thing you you one word that you could use or one phrase that you could use to describe mastery is you're able to do it without a problem okay you're confident in it. you can that confidence is backed up by being able to to do any question you see about dividing by six. And I know that's kind of just like a fancy way of dancing around the word perfect, but it, it is something that I'm, I'm conscious of. You'll notice that every question I got right, right, dividing by 10, we were doing that. We were doing some multiplying two digit numbers. I got these skills leveled up and you'll see none of them are leveled up the full way. I'm trying to find the one that I leveled down. But the point is, I have an idea just from that course challenge of some of what I know how to do and some of what I don't know how to do because either I got question wrong or I hadn't been tested on it. It wasn't included. And so what's going to happen now? Oh my goodness, are we going to find this here? Multiply by taking the factors of 10. I don't remember seeing a question like that. And I know one of them was done before. I don't remember doing it. Um, either way, that was something that I need to practice. And so what we'll do now is, let's zoom out. If I go done, I got 97%. And you'll notice I'm probably about halfway, 16%, right? I said we, we would have done roughly a third of the course or seen a third of the skills in the course. So that would mean if I didn't fully master those skills, if you looked at those, I call them castles. I hadn't built the whole castle. And so because I hadn't built the whole castle, I'm not at that full 33%. I haven't leveled up all the skills. I haven't gotten all the points, but I have gotten pretty, pretty close. I've gotten about halfway there. So what would the next step be for a student? Well, that was quite involved, what we just did, but there's no reason why a student couldn't do that maybe once a day, a couple times a week, and use that. Like even if you did 15 minutes a day, whatever questions you don't finish in that 15 minutes, if there are any, you can actually pick up where you left off the next day. And I think that idea of practicing 